welcome young and old, gay and straight, married, single, bisexual, transgender, welcome. People of all colors, cultures, and abilities, welcome. Noisy, wiggly babies and children of all ages, welcome. Rich and poor, powerful and weak, believers and questioners and questioning believers, welcome. Welcome all you who seek God's graceful, open-hearted love and the beautiful new world that love makes possible. Welcome to St. Stephen United Methodist Church. Good morning, St. Stephen community, Facebook Live and beyond. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning for Palm Sunday. Today is the day that we remember uh, that Jesus entered Jerusalem to the shouts of Hosanna and gathering crowds. Today is the day that we begin our final journey in Lent, the journey of Holy Week toward Easter next Sunday. We hope that you'll join us for the rest of this week. Uh, we will be having uh, an agape meal, a love feast on Thursday evening for Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. via Zoom and Facebook Live. You may join us there. Those links are in your bulletin this morning. And then we'll be observing the Stations of the Cross on Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, via Facebook Live. And then, of course, we'll be back here live again next Sunday morning for Easter Sunday at 1050. Our service this morning involves an act of anointing. And so I invite you during the prelude in just a minute to go and get some olive oil and um, have that ready so that you may anoint yourself on your hands or your forehead as you feel comfortable um, when we get to that act at the end of the, toward the end of the service. As you've just heard, St. Stephen is a place where all are welcome to gather in God's house. And when we mean all, we, when we say all, we mean all. No matter where you've been, no matter where you're going. No matter where you are today. No matter your station, no matter your circumstance, no matter your story. No matter your sexual orientation, your sexual identity. This is a place where you are not only welcome, but affirmed as a child of God. Because we believe that everyone is child of God, created in the image of God, loved and claimed by God. As we prepare ourselves for worship this morning, I invite you to use the time during the prelude as a time to center yourself, as a time, so to speak, to cross over the threshold, not with your body. You obviously can't do that because we cannot be together. But cross over the threshold into this sacred time and space with your mind, with your spirit, with your heart, with your very being, so that as much as possible, you may be fully present to our time together this morning. As we prepare to recall that procession of old, the procession of palms the procession of shouts of Hosanna, I invite you to receive the prelude in an attitude which helps you prepare for worship. Let us prepare ourselves.
Welcome. Welcome to Palm Sunday. We're so glad that you have joined us here and there. I invite you now to perhaps not rise in body but in spirit and to share the unsurpassing peace with one another. As a reminder, we're using the ASL sign for peace be with you. So I say peace be with you. Peace be with you and also with you. And also with you and also with you. Peace be with you. And see them all down here on the rug but we do have palm leaves that we are Jeffrey and I have kind of been waving them and we kind of put them around the the sanctuary on the communion table and different back on the piano so that it still felt like like Palm Sunday and I do so much appreciate all of you all sending me your your videos of you waving your palm branches and parents I appreciate you playing along and and getting those to us so this morning I wanted to talk to you about something that is kind of a little, um, I don't know, maybe a little confusing a little bit. I don't know if you were listening to the song that, that Ryan and Christy were singing, but they kept saying, who is this man? Who is this man? And that's, that when I first heard them singing that, it made me think of um, a story about Mr. Blake when he was about five years old. He had his best friend over to play, Matt, and they'd been playing all day long. And at one point late in the afternoon, Matt was upstairs playing in Blake's room, and Blake was sitting out on the curb, and they'd kind of had an argument. And so I went out and I said, what's, what's the problem? Well, they couldn't decide on what they wanted to play. They couldn't agree, and so they had kind of gotten mad at each other. So I brought up a lot of good things that I thought might help solve the problem, and none of them were good ideas to, to Blake. And so I finally said, what do you think, what would Jesus do? Mm. And Blake looked at me, and he said, I don't know, Mommy, I've never met the man. And so when we were talking today about the kind of the message today is who is this man, I immediately thought about Blake in that story because he, he never met the man. But then I started thinking, we have met the man. We've met that man in a lot of different ways. In December, we met the man when he was a brand new baby. And he was in the manger and Mary and Joseph were there. And we talked about how he was, he was born. Nobody would make room for him, even though he was so important. So he was born just in a lowly manger. Then in Sunday school, we met that man again when we read this story that was new to all of us, when he was probably like eight or nine, I don't know. And he got lost from his parents. And when his parents found him again, you all remember, you're probably saying, oh yeah, that's when they found out he'd been hanging out in the temple with the priests, learning about things. And then we've met the man again when he was a teacher. And he was talking, he's told us all the parables and we've, we've talked about all the stories that he's taught through the parables. And this morning we're meeting him again when he's a king, except he's not coming in as a king, he's coming in on a, probably a smelly old donkey. But what we do know, each of those times, each of those ways that we've met the man, Jesus, the one thing that we've talked about in Sunday school and at children's time is that regardless of all those different ways that we've met Jesus, is that Jesus wants us to try to live like he did, to be kind, to be loving. And we talk about that in, in our church every single Sunday and that big old sign out there by the front door when you walk in that says, welcome all. And so it really doesn't matter how you know Jesus, or even if you've met the man, personally or not, the important thing is Jesus is already here. Jesus is here. Jesus knows you. And no matter who you are, as Jeffrey said at the beginning of the service, and if it doesn't matter if you had a good day or a bad day, 
doesn't matter what you're doing. Jesus still loves you, and Jesus is here already. So that's what I want you to remember as you go through your week, is that regardless of how you know Jesus, Jesus knows you and loves you. Michael. Our scripture this morning comes from the 21st chapter of Matthew. As Matthew recounts Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, I invite you now to hear these words and to listen for what the Spirit is saying. When they had come near Jerusalem, and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. 
This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna! in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Holy wisdom, holy word. When I was young, working in our family business, my father taught me a very important thing about the English language, a lesson that he had learned from his boss, the president of the bank where he had once worked. I came to learn later in life that, in fact, this is not true about all languages. Not all languages function this way, but in English, inflection is very important because inflection conveys meaning. So the sentence my father used with me was, I never said you could borrow my car. Seems simple enough, right? I never said you could borrow my car. 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 When Jesus came into Jerusalem, the crowds were gathering and many were shouting and asking, Who is this man? Four simple words, yet so many meanings. Who is this man? Who is this man? Who is this man? Who is this man? I suspect that those who gathered at the gates of Jerusalem had many, many different names for for Jesus. Many, many different answers to that question, who is this man? For some of them, they named him the Christ, the Anointed One. For some, his name was Rabbi, Teacher. For others, friend, master, savior. For some, I have no doubt, his name was Rabble Rouser. For some, defiler. For others, enemy. Others had no name at all. They had no idea what was going on. They just heard, what's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. And said, who is this man? What's going on? Tell me, tell me, tell me. I hear a buzz down at the gate, but I don't know. And I want to be in on the story. Who is Christ to you? What's his name for you? That's the question, I think, that comes to us from this story 
At least it comes to me today, who is the name for Christ for me, for you? Is, is Jesus indeed the Christ, your Savior? Perhaps. Some might even say, Jesus is my Lord and Master. Maybe for some of you, Jesus is a good friend, someone that you can always turn to, share your deepest, most intimate thoughts. For some of you, Jesus may be a great teacher, someone who offers a way of life, a clear moral code, a clear commandment to love one another as we love ourselves. For some, I have no doubt, Jesus is simply an annoyance or a pest, someone that someone in our lives keeps trying to push us towards. Maybe it's your parents dragging you to church. Maybe it's a spouse who wants Jesus to be more a part of your household and your life and your marriage. Maybe for some of you, Jesus is just a goody two-shoes because he never seems to make a mistake. Always high and mighty. Maybe for some of you, Jesus is only judge and critic. Always that inner voice telling you you could do better. You don't live up to expectation. Maybe for some, Jesus is simply a mystery, an enigma. Somebody you can't quite figure out, never understand where he's going or what's going to happen next. And maybe, maybe for some who are gathering here this morning, Jesus is a stranger. Someone you've heard about, but don't know. Someone you don't even, haven't even heard about. You simply know there's some kind of buzz, and this darn feed keeps popping up in your Facebook feed. What's the buzz? Tell me. What's the happening? What the story says to us this morning, what the scripture said to me this week and what I want you to hear is that it doesn't matter who Jesus is to you or how you name Jesus. Because the good news of the journey of this week is that no matter who you are, no matter where you stand, no matter what's in your past, no matter where you've been, Christ calls you beloved. Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, anoints you as a child of God, beautifully and wondrously made in the image of God. So I say to you this morning, bring as many names as you have for Jesus. Because Jesus the Christ is here to welcome you, to affirm you, and to call you friend and beloved. Amen.
invite the adoring crowd, shouting his name, proclaiming him blessed. Jesus knew that this was not the end of the journey. Jesus knew that as much as it seemed like he had arrived, this was not his destination. Jesus knew that his destination lay at the other end of the next week, on the other side of a difficult journey. And so he moved on. And it was morning, and it was evening, the second day, the day Jesus went to the temple. It was on the Monday that religion got in the way. An, outside, an outsider would have thought that it was a pet shop's fire sale. And the outsider, in some ways, wouldn't have been far wrong. Only it wasn't household pets. It was pigeons that were being purchased. And it wasn't a fire sale. It was a rip-off stall in a holy temple bartering birds for sacrifice. And the price was something that only the rich could afford. No discounts to students, no pensioners, no disabled types or UB40 card holders. Then he, the holiest man on earth, went through the bizarre bazaar like a bull in a china shop. So the doves got liberated and the pigeon sellers got angry and the police went crazy and the poor people clapped like mad because he was making a sign that God was for everybody, not just for those who could afford him. He turned the tables on Monday, the day that religion got in the way. Thankfully, the money changers in the temple were not the only persons with whom Jesus came in contact that day. Jesus also saw the crippled and the blind who came to the temple and called him healer. And he healed them. Jesus does seek our healing and our peace. And so we come now to the time in our service when we pray for others, when we intercede for those who need healing. And so let us pray. For those who are crippled by disease or anxiety, For those under quarantine,
Let us pray for those who are crippled by a system. For those on welfare and food stamps. For those crippled by a system of racism. Let us pray for those who are blind to beauty, love, and peace. For those who seek to resolve conflict or inner turmoil through violence, especially violence with a gun. For those who soil and pollute the earth and fail to see its beauty and place in God's reconciling love. Let us pray for those who are blind to what they must do now or what they must do next. For those feeling isolated as they shelter in place. For those seeking to guide us prudently and carefully through this crisis. Let us pray for the church in places where it has the possibility of healing the wounds of the nations. For St. Stephen United Methodist Church, for the North Texas Conference, for the United Methodist Church and the Church Universal, that we might be a witness of peace and health, safety and prudence to the world.
Let us pray for ourselves that we may discern a clear vision of your kingdom and that we may steadily walk your path, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is in this same spirit that we pray for peace, forgiveness, and reconciliation. If we have used your house for our purposes as if you did not mind or it did not matter, Lord, forgive us. If we have cosseted your house in tradition rather than hallowed it by prayer, Lord, forgive us. If we have made it a house for one nation, or part of a nation, or for part of the church, Lord, forgive us. And if we can see clearly the misuse others make of your house and are blind to our own malpractices, Lord, forgive us. Kindle in us and in all your people the desire to make all your sanctuaries the shop windows of heaven rather than religious theme parks of earth. We ask this for your own name's sake. And now with the confidence of children we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We who know Christ are privileged to know him as a fellow child of God, to be called children of God, to know him as our beloved sibling. But, alas, that was not true for everyone Jesus met that week. On Tuesday, again, he met people who thought they knew him, but knew him not. And it was morning, and it was evening, the third day, the day pe Jesus ran into people who knew him not. that he gave it to them in the neck. If you had been there, you would have thought that a union official was being taken to task by a group of backbench Tory MPs, or that the chairman of a multinational corporation was being interrogated by left-wing activists posing as shareholders. They wanted to know why, and they wanted to know how. They were the respectable men, the influential men, the establishment. The questions they asked range from silly schoolgirl speculations about whether you would be a bigamist in heaven if you'd married twice on earth, to what was the crucial role of civilized behavior. They knew the answers already, or so they thought, otherwise they would never have asked the questions. And like most of us, they were looking for an argument with no intention of a change of heart. So he flailed them with his tongue, those who tried to look interested but never wanted to be committed. And that was on the Tuesday, the day when he gave it to them, to us, in the neck.
soon. Jesus would be gathering with his disciples for his last meal with them. The last supper. But that wasn't the only time Jesus would gather with his disciples for a meal that week. On Wednesday, he traveled to the outskirts of Jerusalem to Bethany, to the house of a leper, where he shared a meal with his disciples and with Mary. And it was morning, and it was evening, the fourth day, the day Jesus was anointed by Mary. It was on the Wednesday that they called him a waster. The place smelled like the perfume department of a big store. It was as if somebody had bumped their elbow against a bottle and sent it crashing to the floor setting off the most expensive stink bomb on earth. But it happened in a house, not a shop. And the woman who broke the bottle was no casual afternoon shopper. She was the penniless, poorest of the poor, giving away the only precious thing she had. And he sat still while she poured the liquid all over his head. As unnecessary as aftershave on a full crop of hair and a bearded chin. And those who smelt it, and those who saw it, and those who remembered that he was against extravagance, called him a waster. They forgot that he also was the poorest of the poor. And they who had much and who had given him nothing objected to a pauper giving him everything. Jealousy was in the air when a poor woman's generosity became an embarrassment to their tight-fistedness. That was on the Wednesday when they called him a waster. We come now to the time in our service of anointing. I invite you to bring forth the oil that you have prepared and to engage in an act of anointing by spreading the oil perhaps in the sign of a cross on the back of your hands or the palms of your hands or your forehead. Christ is indeed the anointed one. And you each are indeed anointed as children of God. And so I invite you now into this simple act as a reminder that you have been anointed by God.
many that night called Mary a waster. Called Jesus a waster because of the extravagant gift that Mary brought and offered to Jesus. But Mary brought everything she could because she knew that she could only do what she felt called to do, to give Christ everything. And so we come to Christ today to bring our gifts, to bring our tithes and our offerings, that Christ might indeed receive them welcomely, and that we, they might be used for the furtherance of the kingdom of God here in North Mesquite and East Dallas and beyond to further the ministries and mission of St. Stephen United Methodist Church and the church beyond. I invite you now to bring your tithes and your offerings online. You may give by texting any amount to 84321 or by going to the web portal at the URL at the bottom of your screen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for Mary. For Mary, who in the face of being claimed as one child of God, responded by the outpouring of the extravagant gift of everything she had. And so we too bring our gifts to you that you might bless them and use them, that they might be used to bring about your great shalom, the reconciliation of all things in Jesus Christ, your Son who is our reconciler and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I pray you peace on this journey to this week and look forward to seeing you again here on Thursday. Peace.